Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Intellectual Agrarian Podcast, where we talk philosophy from the farm. Today, we're going to share with you a quick little article that I published on 1-2-2019. It's going to be a little hard to get used to saying 2019. And I just want to share with you this quick little article I wrote since it involves the New Year's. It is called Three Mistakes Not to Repeat in 2019. This was originally published on TerrenceLahue.com. 2019 has arrived in all of its glory sharing with us a new set of 365 opportunities to do something new, incredible, and even flawed. We have no guarantee that we will succeed in our day-to-day activities. We only know that we have the chance. With another day of breath, we have another moment to see if we have the courage and capacity to make our wishes reality. There's a great John Wayne quote that I recall every New Year's. Tomorrow is the most important thing in life comes to us at midnight, very clean. It's perfect when it arrives and it puts itself in our hands. It hopes we learn something from yesterday. It's that learning something from yesterday that becomes the tricky part. There's an old quote, those who do not learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. If we want to avoid making the same mistakes of our past, avoiding falling into the same pits as we did before, it's important to look back at our past mistakes honestly. For that reason, I've made an effort to look back at my mistakes of 2018 and pick out the largest three. These are the mistakes that are universal and easy to repeat without vigilance. Mistake number one, seening your laurels. Especially if you find some small measure of success, it can become easy to enjoy sharing them. Tell your closest and dearest friends about the victories you've won and the dragons you have slain. In the right proportion, this is fine and well-earned. However, it more often becomes easy to bore someone else to tears with your descriptions of your success. There's an arrogance that becomes assumed through your enthusiasm, discrediting the success earned. Friends become tired of your voice and your presence, placing you in the cold and forgotten circle of minor acquaintances. It is better to be understated in your victories allowing your actions seen to speak for your abilities. Share a little of the good fortune you're having with others. Be content with knowledge of your own success without needing to spread it with your own voice. The stories of your victories may never be sung in the halls of others, but maybe they will if you don't try to sing them off-key. Mistake number two, where's your meaning? Among the best books I read this last year was Man's Search for Meaning by Dr. Viktor Frankl, in which the author shares his experiences of the concentration camps in Nazi Germany, and then proceeds to use it as an illustration for his theories on logos therapy, the central point of which being that man needs meaning, that man is made for meaning above all else. When man cannot find meaning, he looks for pleasure or distraction along the road to death. Placing self-importance, meaning of existence, in the things that are outside of your control will lead to depression, anxiety, and misery. If you cannot find meaning in something that is greater than the strength of your own hands, you will eventually find yourself bankrupt of identity and purpose. For the longest time, I carried the conviction that so long as you were the best and the strongest, you had meaning. Your value and the value of others was based on your ability to do and succeed. Success meant value and meaning. The truth of the matter is, you can't always win. You can't always succeed. When your sense of meaning is based on winning and you lose, you lose more than the game or the challenge. Instead of living life knowing that in the twilight of my strength I will become a victim of my erroneous philosophy, to die by the sword I carried, my sense of value and meaning has required modification. There is more than winning or the success of the moment. My faith, my belief in God, has become prioritized in a way that it should have been from the start. Even if you aren't religious, switching your sense of meaning and value from what you have earned to what you give makes a tremendous difference. It is looking at love, the virtue of giving from yourself, as an indicator of success in life rather than what you earn by your own skill or effort. 
Mistake number three, telling the wrong story. Among the ideas that my 2018 focused on was the narrative fallacy, or narrativity. It's when you take a complex situations or events and apply a narrative that makes it simple, and more often than not, a story you want to hear. The consequence of most lines of study, if it's given any worthwhile amount of time, is that you'll begin to see it crop up in your daily life. Throughout the 2018 year, I told myself several stories that I found to be untrue, but at the time, suited what I wanted to believe. This is not a mistake that is easily corrected, or can ever be fully removed from our lives. It is a very human and sometimes necessary problem. Life can become too complex to appreciate all the threads that run through it. The key is being aware of the habit, of placing less faith in our own assumptions and beliefs in the narrative that we write, often divorced from reality. What's next? I hope these trio of errors have helped you as much as they have myself in their identification. These mistakes are universal in their effects and may crop up again in the new year. There will always be new mistakes. The key is being humble enough to learn from them the first time. I hope you've enjoyed this little article reading. I hope that you find yourself encouraged in the new year to go forth and make a difference, to grow more and learn more. If you're new to the show, we'd appreciate it if you subscribe on whatever your podcast player of choice is. We're available on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, pretty much all of them. If you also would leave us a review while you're there, we'd greatly appreciate it. Let others know how great the show is. Thanks again for listening. This has been Terrence Leahy and the Intellectual Agrarian Podcast, reminding you to keep farming the dream.